episode uh, four of the lockdown series. Uh, today I'm with David Ford from Ireland. How are you doing, David? Yeah, not bad, Brian. How are you? Yeah, yeah, not so bad. Uh, where about in Ireland are you from, David? Um, I'm from a wee fishing town called Kilkeel. Um, it's right on the border of the north and south of Ireland. So I'm smack bang in the middle of, of everywhere. Was it like though? Is it like countryside or...? Uh, where I am, it is, yeah. Um, it's it's sort of the biggest fishing town in Ireland. So, you know, it's it's big for fishing and things like that. But, you know, it's very sparse. There's, um, you know, houses are well spread out and, and things like that. It's quite a small wee town. There's only about 18,000 people in it, so it's not too bad. Not a big population there, then? No, not here. here. Uh, how, how are you coping with this lockdown, though? Uh, not bad, actually. Um, starting to get a bit bored now. Um, the first couple of weeks were fine. It was just sort of, you know, like a holiday, but there's only so much cutting the grass and things like that you can do around the house. Is your, is your garden pristine like right, man? At the minute it is, yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to find jobs that I didn't know I had. I'm putting a fence up today now that I didn't need or I didn't want, so just anything to keep busy. Well, I, I'm just in the middle of jet washing my garden, so I've just nipped in to do this interview, and I'll go and finish, finish back off in a bit. <laughs> just right, just right. I didn't see him. Uh, when did you down tools? Um, I stopped about, it was the third week of um, March that I stopped. Um, just all the suppliers were starting to talk about closing and customers were starting to, you know, they're getting a bit wary about letting you into the house and things. So we just thought, no, we'll just, we'll stop now and see how things go, um, see what's going to progress out of this. So, um, you know, about the third week in March, about the 23rd, 24th, I think then that's when I actually stopped. I, th I think I did notice, like the likes of you and Sir Matthew Guest, you you both uh, stopped quite early uh, b before. Because uh, was it the thirty first they announced the lockdown? Yeah, um, I think the lockdown in Ireland was actually a little bit before the UK. Um, although north of Ireland, sort of a wee bit later too. But for us getting materials and things, you know, all the suppliers were starting to close down and. Um, deliveries were starting to get slow and things like that. So I think we were slightly ahead of, of the, the mainland. So um, that's just the way it went. How oh, severe is it though? Do you know with it being like a small island? Is it uh, is it more severe than set, uh, mainland? No, def definitely not. Um, obviously with a smaller population, it's not going to be quite as you know quite as big. Um, like it's it's bad enough around different parts. Like the, you know Belfast and Dublin, I think is quite bad, but out the countryside areas and places you don't really hear too much you know too much about it but um it's not it doesn't seem too bad at the minute now do you know anybody what's had it um just hearsay yeah um, you know it's just like a friend of a friend's had it or you know uh, somebody's family members had it things like that. i don't personally know anybody that's you know that's had it or been going through it or, or anything like that you know yeah say me a friend of a friend's had it and somebody's uncle seems, had it yeah yeah, it seems to be the way everybody knows somebody, but they don't actually know somebody. Yeah. So, uh, we, we like, again, where you've been being on like a small island, uh, is your self isolation like more severe than ours? Did you have to, you know, like we're allowed out for an hour a day and we can emergency go to work and things like that, go shopping? Is it, is it because you're a small island? Is it is it more strict there for you? I wouldn't. No, I don't. I don't actually think it is. I think we're sort of. Uh, you know, the same rules apply over here. Um, yeah. Although saying that, you know, most people are sticking to it. Um, you know, you don't see too many people out the streets or, um, you know, there's not too many people around the shop at any one time or, or different things like that. So I think we're pretty much similar, the things that we're doing. Um, but, you know, I don't know if we're maybe sticking to it a bit more than, than what other people are. Um, but, you know, that's hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll disappear soon. What, what are you doing for income? Same as, same uh, as the rest of us, self-employed. Yeah. yeah, anybody self-employed at the minute, I think, uh, well, for me, you know, just living off savings at the minute. Um, but then, you know, that will only last so long. So um, hopefully in the, next, in the next month or two, you know, something's sorted and we can we can get back to work. Yeah. Uh, what business do you have? Um, I, when I started off, um, I started off flooring when I was about 13. So I've always been out floors and then, because there's no actual trade for flooring in Ireland, I had to go then and do a trade. So um, I picked up joinery for a few years, um, passed my qualifications, so I'm actually a qualified joiner. Um, and then as soon as I finished that, straight back into floors. So, um, you know, I've just been flooring basically my whole life. Fine fit. Is it more like domestic or contract or do you do a mixture of both? 
Um, I've been a mixture of both. Um, I do a lot of sub work as well. So when I'm at home, generally it's mostly supply and fit. I also sub into a, a bespoke shop not too far from me. So um, Chris, he would he would put out some nice nice thing, couple of oddball jobs and things. So I am. Um, but then I also do the contract side of things um, for carpetage over in France and England and things. So you know, I've a I've a good mixture of 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 stuff that I can do. Um, all over the place doing different things so i'm never generally out of work if you know say the carpets go quiet i'm into lps or into laminates or you know the wood floors and things like that so um you know a bit of everything really uh did you say you do some work for carpetage yes i do so do you do the cruise ships and that yeah over in france doing the cruise ships for them um and then all the wood jobs over in england um i'll be back and forward over to over to there as well so i I get about a bit i travel (laughs) So was you busy before this lockdown, yeah? Yeah, um, January was quite busy. Um, February started to slow down a bit, and then March was just it was starting to pick up. Um, just quite a few orders in the books and things as well, but then yeah. that's all knocked on the head until until things get back to normal. Um, I was, you know, for carpet eyes, I was due to actually go over to France um, next week, starting a new ship there as well. So um, that's been sort of on the back burner. We're waiting to see when we can actually get back over and, and get stuck into that again. So... Time will tell, hopefully. I'd work the cruise ships in it. I've worked on a couple. Uh, they are and they're not. Like, you know, with a good team, everybody that works there, to, you know, they're a great team of guys. They all get on well together. So um, it's sort of, you know, there's lots of work to do. Yes, it's hard, but, you know, you have a bit of fun doing it. And, you know, it sort of puts the day in a lot quicker. Yeah. Uh, how easily accessible are materials in Ireland? Do you know, like here, wholesalers are ten for a penny. Uh, what what are the, is the plenty there? Or are you limited? No, we're we're very limited actually over here. I think um, you know, I was trying to count up. I think I have five wholesalers in the whole of Ireland that really? that I use. Use so you know, we're very select. Like we've only a group here, um, and then you've a um PFL so floor coverings. But, you know, there's not, you can't just nip down the road um, and grab materials. Um, for me, you know, it's a 60 mile one way and 60 mile back again, just to go to a flooring supplier to, to pick stuff up. So if you're stuck on a job or something, it's, you know, it's a long jump to go and get get any more material that you need if you're if you're caught out. See, here, if, if you're on a job and you're stuck, no matter where you're out in the northwest, you're always 15 minutes away from one. So you can just nip and, and you, uh, you ring up, you say, oh, have you got such a thing? No, we've no stock. So you just ring another or ring another. And there's the, literally the 10 for a penny uh, round here. Yeah. So Not only that, but, you know, the choice that you have over here, anything on the shelf, it's, you know, there's there's a limited supply of what you actually need. So you need to know the products that you're going to be using and get them put in you know, well in advance of a job to actually do it, you know, do it. Um, you know, you hear general Real compounds and stuff like that sitting on the shelf, but you know they don't they don't do for every single job all the time. So um, you know you sort of need to, to plan well ahead. Yeah. Uh, how different is the flooring industry in Ireland? What's the attitude there towards flooring? Um, it, it's a funny one again. You know there is you get a lot of people, and a floor layer has to do a floor layer's job. Um, you know people will source out good quality work. And you know, only use that. But uh, the other time, you know, people just want as cheap as they can get, and it's you know, handyman will do floors and things like that all the time. So it's um, it's coming round. You know, it's it's sort of being seen now as sort of a skilled trade again. Um, you know, that many people have had bad experiences that they are actually seeking people to do a good job. Uh, see, my, my I've never been to Ireland, but my, my thought on it is because it's like a smallish island, you'd be struggling for fitters. Uh, or, is that the case? Or, or is, there, is there plenty of floor layers out there? Or are you all competing for work? There is. You know, there's no shortage of floor layers. There's a massive shortage of good floor layers. Um, you know, there's that much... There's that much cutthroat going on. You know, everybody's trying to beat everybody else's prices that they drive everything into the ground. And like anybody can rock up with a bolster and a knee kicker and say they're a floor layer. But, they're, you know, nobody has actually seen their work to say, yes, they're a good floor layer. No, they're a bad floor layer and things like that. So, um, you know, there's loads of people that do it. Um, handymen all over Facebook advertising. Um, they're getting products from different places and they're selling away at it. But the skilled side of things is, I think it's starting to get lost. You know, quite badly over here now. 
Well, it's the same here. It's the DIYs what are killing the trade. Anybody can say they're a floor layer or a carpet fitter. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer to fit? Um, I still like my carpets. I started off with the wooden floors. Um, always like wooden floors, but um, carpets are, are what, I, what I prefer. Good body and carpets and good quality stuff to fit. Um, something a bit different, a bit oddball stuff. I prefer doing things like that. Um, LVTs as well, as long as there's borders and designs or you know anything in it to make it a bit more interesting. I prefer doing that sort of work. And uh, how did you get into the industry, David? Family. But I think, you know, everybody that I know, same thing. Um, my brother was a floor, floor layer. He's a lot older than me. So as soon as I basically turned 13, it was, right, come on, we're coming to work with me. Um, so Saturdays, Sundays, school holidays, days off school. I shouldn't have been off school. Um, you know, I was I was stuck in at the deep end from the very start, from when I was quite young as well. So um, that brought me into it and that kept me in it as well. Does your brother still fit? No, he doesn't. He, you know, he's um, he's quite a bit older than me now, so he's, he's um, the, the knees and the bodies give up on him, so he doesn't fit anymore now. How old is he? Uh, he's sixty-four this year. Well, I'll let him off then. I was going to. I thought if he's in his fifties, there's years left yet. But well, <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, what what do you most like about the flooring industry? Um, for me, um, travel. Um, travel and good quality jobs. Um, I like a bit of job satisfaction. Looking back at something and thinking, you know, that's a that's a good job. Something nobody else really does. Um, travel as well. Like I've you know been lucky enough to travel quite a bit around the world um, with the cruise ships and different things. So um, travel and, and things like that are, are what I what I enjoy the most. Same with me. Uh, if I'm on a job for more than three or four days, I start start to yeah. get you. So I like, and I travel all over the country with a job, so I like travelling about different houses, meeting different people. That does it for yeah. me, I think. And, and uh, taking your time, job satisfaction after it. So, Definitely. What uh, do you, know, you, yes. Yeah. What do you dislike about the trade? Um, just the pricing and things, you know, people cutting your throat on prices or, you know, everybody driving the prices down. Like, there's a guy, you know, local to me and... You know, he's supplying and fitting laminates for seven pound fifty a meter. So, you know, it's it's really driving the price down. Um, and then, you know, the, you look expensive then if you're just a bit above that. Um, you know, around the country. So, you know, things like that. It's the fighting and the bickering amongst floor layers and things, and you know, competing for the work and, and different things like that. So, we try and well, like I try and stand out. You know, a, a, away from the rest of the floor layers around my area. Um, just to try and keep the keep the work coming in. So, if you could change anything in the industry, what would it be? Um, if I could change anything, a bit more manufacturer help actually. Um, you know, manufacturers, if they would stand behind their fitters, um, you know, if they would approve fitters, um, if they would say, "Yep, you know, we've seen this guy's work. It's it's very good." Different things like that. If they, if they would actually stand behind their fitters a lot more, uh, or the guys actually fitting their problem, you know, that would be a big change. Um, I think it would help the industry and you know as a whole. Um, it would help quite a lot of everything. So. Uh, and finally, any plans for the future with your company? Um, not at the moment. We've another baby due now in September, so um, we're just taking away to to get the get the the, the baby out. Right. But um, after that. Who knows? I still enjoy fitting. Um, I still enjoy work. I, I enjoy going to work every day. So I'd find it hard to let somebody else do the work for me. But, you know, eventually I've a couple of young lads there now. Hopefully when they're old enough, they'll come into the trade with me. Um, and I can teach them the way that I want them to be taught. So, you know, if I can get them on board, then eventually I'll, I might slow down and open a shop at some stage. But um, at the minute, you know, just keep going the way we're going at the minute. We're not doing too bad. Yeah, my oldest lad's fourteen. I tried getting him into it, helping me, but he's a he's a, he's cleverer than I was at his age. So he's into computers. So fair play to him. Mine are the same. Mine are the same. But hopefully they'll turn. Hopefully they'll come round. Pay them a bit more in the mic, Tom. <laughs> anyway, David, I'll get back to jet washing my flags. And thanks very much for talking to us. And uh, best of luck with this lockdown. And you, Brian. Good man. Speak to you later. Cheers, mate. That's it. Bye, bye. I don't do it.
Hush.